Good morning and welcome to the first meeting of the Power and Chaffrey Drainage Commission Scotland Bill in 2018. I thank our guests for their patience due to the delayed start. The first item on our agenda today is to take further evidence from the promoters of the bill and their agents and I welcome the witnesses before us today. Since the committee last met on 13 December 2017, the committee has received several additional written submissions about the bill. These include submissions and sketches from an individual, Peter Simon, who has concluded that the land plans submitted by the promoters when the bill was lodged are not accurate. These plans fundamentally underpin the bill by showing the benefited land and therefore who should pay towards the upkeep of the POW and it is therefore critical that they are as accurate as possible. This session has therefore been arranged to give the promoters the opportunity to respond to the issues raised by Mr Simon and to give the committee the opportunity to ask any questions. There will also be an opportunity for questions to be asked regarding um, other new issues which have been raised in the other submissions received since the last meeting, which includes a submission signed by 61 residents of the Balgarian estate. Uh, would the promoters like to make an opening statement? Yes, I would, convener. Good morning, convener, committee members, the, the clerk and others. You, have, you should have before you uh, documents which uh, I have presented uh, this morning. I think there was an opinion of council which you will have been sent a copy of earlier this week. Correct. Um, what, what I'm planning to refer to today is, is really five documents. Firstly, it's the opinion of uh, Mr Robert Sutherland, an advocate dated 19th January 2018. A copy of the 1846 Act, a copy of the 1848 Plan, a copy of the Book of Reference and Estimate of Expense dated 1847, and a copy of the Estimate of Increased Value dated 1851. These are all in the pack you've got, so I'm not really going to go into the documents too mu in too much detail. I'm just going to sort of summarise uh, the, the promoter's understanding. So if you have those documents before you, firstly, may I start with a sincere apology on behalf of the promoter and its advisers for the inconvenience to all concerned in a requirement now for the promoter to provide replacement parliamentary plans to identify properly and robustly the benefited land for the purposes of the bill. As there will be new heritors as a consequence of new parliamentary plans, they will need to be notified with a requirement for an objection period. It is necessary for me to firstly explain how this error occurred and secondly, the promoter's proposals for remedying the situation. The promoter's witnesses have provided evidence to the committee that the benefited land, and I will for convenience call it the red line boundary because we, we, we can think in terms of a red line boundary, shown on the existing bill plan matches exactly that set out in the 1846 Act. Uh, I, I'm sorry, the 1846 plan, a copy of which I provided the, to the committee at its meetings on the 24th of May uh, last year and 13th December. I've also provided such evidence uh, on the basis of the Commissioner's instructions. Firstly, the promoter requires to clarify that whilst the existing bill plans are based on the 1846 plan in their preparation, the exact boundaries were finalised using the experience and knowledge of Mr Guest as a qualified surveyor and experienced commissioner. On 11th December 2017, my attention was drawn by your clerk to an, to an archival website called Scotland's Places, where copies of the following documents which you have before you can be viewed. This was the first time that the promoter was aware of these documents and, and that they were available and could be examined. Those documents are a copy of the 1848 plan, a copy of the book of reference and expense dated 1847, and a copy of the estimate of increased value dated 1851. So these are the documents which, uh, the three documents which the, 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 the promoters were, were, unavail were, were unaware were available. Having checked the, checked the 1848 plan against the 1846 plan, it was noted that these were substantially the same, although the 1848 plan is certified as having been adjusted for the 1846 Act. And uh, that, I, I say that may be the one we should use, but I'll be turning, returning to this point uh, when I consider Mr Simon's uh, latest submission, which I've just seen earlier this morning. After the promoters gave evidence on the 13th of December 2017, my attention was drawn by your clerk to a submission by Mr Simon dated uh, 12th December 2017, which provided for an assessment of benefited land having regard to all three of these documents I've just mentioned. A copy of Mr Simon's submission was subject to a preliminary examination 
and Mr Guest arranged to meet Mr Simon and a meeting duly took place between them on 20th December 2017. At that meeting, the potential for an amendment of the existing bill plans became clear in the light of these newly available documents. I then called your clerk uh, on the 20th of December 2017 to advise him of the matter. I in fact spoke with him on the 21st and I summarised the outcome of the meeting between Mr Simon and Mr Guest. It is of course vitally important that the replacement ban plans are as accurate as they can be. The commissioners have therefore sought an opinion of council on the correct interpretation of the 1846 Act which has been circulated today and, of course, sent to your clerk uh, on Monday of this week. In particular, the commissioners have asked Council to provide advice as to how the 1846 Act defines land in respect of which assessments are made in order that the commissioners can provide detailed instructions to their surveyors for drawing up replacement plans to identify benefited land for the purposes of the bill. As you'll note, Council examined the 1848 plan the copy book of reference and estimate of expense and the copy estimate of increased value, copies of which you, you have before you. Council's opinion describes the broad purposes of the Act, which included the provision of powers to the commissioners to undertake works to the POW and to appoint surveyors to undertake an accurate survey of the lands adjacent to the POW. A plan and book of reference were to be made. Once the works were completed, the commissioners were to complete a second survey in order to establish the extent to which the land had increased in value as a consequence of those works. All of the expense of the works were to be recovered by way of an assessment raised and levied on the owners of the land. This is, in summary, the way in which the 1846 Act uh, operates. Council's opinion indicates limitations inherent in the work that was done in 1846. Whilst the schedule of land and, valuation, and valuations would allow one to know the extent of the land, no precise boundary lands are land sorry, no precise boundary lines are given in the sense of a red line. Council states that there are no consistent red clear sorry red line identification of the boundaries that has benefited from the work and therefore professional judgment is therefore required in establishing precisely the red line council notes that some buildings appear on the 1848 plan and it's re a reasonable inference that they would not be benefited as they would not have been built on a site that was affected by drainage problems it is therefore the promoter's intention to exclude such buildings Further, Council notes that the penultimate page of the report accompanying the Book of Reference states that the works to Dollary Farm should be excluded because of an agreement made between the then owner and the uh, commissioners. For this reason, the promoter wishes to adhere to that approach. <clears throat> Council is clear that in drawing up the replacement plans to identify benefited land, the promoter's surveyors must have regard to the 1848 plan copy book of reference and estimate of expense and the copy of estimate of increased value and the buildings that existed in 1846 and that the dollary lands ought to be excluded. Council advises that where there are ambiguities, it would be reasonable to resolve these by reference to what can be ascertained on the ground. Council has further identified three residential properties at Nether Mains of Gorthy that require to be included in the replacement plans together with a house at Mill Hill and notification will be required for these new heritors. It's important to make it clear that whilst the 1846 Act identifies land that has been improved as a result of works to the POW and provides for valuations on what I'll describe as a plot by plot basis, the POW bill uses the land that was improved under the 1846 Act as a proxy for identifying the red line for the benefited land in the current uh, POW bill. Power Bill does not provide individual assessments on a plot-by-plot -plot basis, but uses valuations based on the categories of land that are used, such as agricultural, commercial, woodland, residential and amenity. If the committee are content with this methodology, it is the promoter's intention to instruct uh, Mr Willett in particular to draw up the replacement plans in line with the methodology endorsed by Council. Mr Guest will be involved in that exercise also. 
From a preliminary assessment, there will be four residential properties that require now to be included and notified. That's the three houses at Nether Mains of Gorthy and one at Mill Hill. There will also be further agricultural land, including land at Nether Mains of Gorthy, that requires to be included and notified. Some agricultural land will now be excluded. There will be no change to the residential benefited land at Balgowan. I would add that, that having looked at the, the plans again, it's also considered that there will be an additional requirement to notify the owners of amenity land at Balgowan. But in terms of amenity land, no such assessment is actually made against amenity land. It's a nil, a nil assessment. The, we've been given a copy of Mr. Simon's submission uh, only this morning and haven't had time to fully digest it. But, but my, my sort of broad take on what he's saying about Council's opinion is that he is broadly endorsing that. Um, the, the, I think the last sentence of his comments is, I think, of some significance because he refers to a yet further plan, an 1851 plan, which he says is currently unavailable. Uh, that, that, that is not something which the promoters were aware of, nor, nor was I until we saw that this morning. Uh, in, in terms of dealing with that, I think it's important that the promoters urgently contact the National Records Office to see if that plan is throwing up any, any different uh, situation. Uh, it's expected uh, that it's going to be following the 1848 plan, perhaps with some minor adjustments. Uh, but beyond that, not having seen it, we, we can't comment. So I, I, would, I would finish by repeating uh, the promoters and my own sincere apologies, uh, and we await your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. McKee, and your apologies, duly noted and accepted. Clearly, there has been um, a rather significant oversight and omission in this process. What I want to clarify, Mr. McKee, and perhaps Mr. Guest would be the best to answer this, but Mr. McKee, you stated that uh, promoters were unaware that plans were available. I just want to clarify if there was any knowledge that there had been other plans in existence, but there was a belief that they were no longer available. So I want to clarify if this was a, a known unknown of an unknown unknown. I think, I think the, 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 act, the Act itself does make a reference to these documents, mm -hmm. so it, it's clear from the Act that, that the, 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 these documents were prepared. Uh -huh. uh, so that's, that's the first thing I would say about it, but uh, I, I defer to Mr Guest, as far as I know, the promoted position that we do not know these were, mm -hmm. these were available. So it was known that there were, there were other plans. Was I'd any? Seen, I'd seen the I had seen the plans which I, uh, you know, copies of the 1846 plan, but I had not seen any of the other documents. If I had done, obviously I'd have taken them into account. Were you aware of the existence or potential well, only existence? in the sense that they were referred to in the in the 1846 Act. I've I've never seen them. So to clarify, you were aware that there were other land plans in existence. Well, I'm only aware of the words in the in the 1846 Act, but I mean, that's 170 years ago. Uh, I have never seen those plans. No, I, I, I simply, all I wish to clarify, Mr Guest, is that you were aware that other plans had been prepared or had been, or could potentially have been, have been prepared, which to be consistent with the Act, but you did not see these plans, and did you make any attempts to find out if these plans were in existence or accessible? Well, the... Uh, well, I saw the, uh, I'd seen the plan which Mr. Murray, who used to own Dollery, mm -hmm. had. I'd seen that one, and I'd seen copies of a uh, sort of photocopy of that plan, and that's what I'd seen. That was the extent of the plans I had seen. So, in regards to these plans that have subsequently been brought to light, just, just clarify: you were aware of their existence, but you did not, but you had not studied them in any detail, and you had not incorporated. I hadn't, I hadn't, I had seen the plan. The plan that I had seen was the one that Mr. Murray, who used to own Dollery, had. That's the only uh, actual original plan from the 1846 time that I had, I had seen and okay. that I was aware of. So these plans that have been brought to life, Mr. Simon, you were unaware of their existence? I was unaware that they uh, still existed, yeah. Still existed. Were you aware of them having ever existed? Well, in the sense that they're referred to in the, in the Act, to that extent, I was aware. So you were aware that there were plans, in addition to what had been used in the preparation of this bill, but you did not bring that to the committee's attention? 
Um, well, I suppose to be honest, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I, I have learnt quite a bit going through this process and I wasn't quite fully aware at that time of the different, of the different versions of the plan that were produced in 1846. I suppose I thought there was one plan to which, uh, on, you know. So to clarify, as a promoter, you were aware that there were documents which would impact upon who was eligible for assessment. You were aware of their existence, but you did not bring that forward to the committee. Is that correct? I was not aware at that time that there were different versions of the plan dating back from, the, from 1846. I thought there was one plan. There were different copies of different copies of the plan, but they all essentially were the same. I wasn't aware that there were that that the plans had been adjusted uh, okay. in, the, in that at that time. So as far as I was concerned, as far as I, my understanding was, there was one plan. Um, and then there, were, then there were schedules which defined the areas on that plan which benefited. Uh, I was not aware that there were different versions of that plan. So you were aware that there were multiple plans, but I think, believed that they did not differ from each well, other? Well, I think that, thinking about it, in 1846, they didn't have photocopying machines. Somebody would have produced the original survey plan showing all the fields which might benefit from the improvements which would be carried out. Further copies would be produced by tracing over it. Uh -huh. So it's quite possible there would have been more copies because somebody would have traced over it and produced another copy of the plan. But I was not aware that there were that those those other copies would be any different from the first one. Okay. And just to clarify, when you make reference to being aware of plans mentioned in the Act in addition to the plan that was submitted originally, can you just clarify what you mean by that? Well, in the sense that the, 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 the Act refers to um, plans produced at different dates. Um, can you clarify for the committee, how many plans does the Act, the, the original Act, refer to? Well, it refers to, I haven't got it in front of me now, but I think it's the 1846 Act, 1846 plan. There was a, as my understanding was there was a plan produced before the works were carried out, and it was then... Um, there was another plan, which might have been, the, which was probably the same plan um, adjusted. Well, it would have been the same plan adjusted, produced after the works were carried out. What plan did you base, uh, have the promoters based the bill on? The one that um, uh, Tony Murray um, of Dollery has. And what is plan is that? Is that, that before the, the that's actual before works? before the works were carried out. So you were aware of it was a plan after the works were carried out? which yeah. has been cited as changing the definition. I of don't think the plan, I think though that my understanding was that the, the post-works plan was simply the first plan modified by these schedules, which identify which fields on the, on the 1846 plan had benefited from the work carried out. So it wasn't simply a case of it being a tracing exercise, it was a plan. Well, uh, uh, I, I, the plans which I've which I've which I've seen all basically show the same fields. You've got to read the two together. You've got the plan and the schedule. It's not a. It's as as uh, Alistair McKee has told you. Isn't the plans don't have a red line going around mm -hmm. them saying this is the benefited area. The plans show the fields in which they The 1846 plan shows the fields in which there was the potential for an improvement, and then there's a schedule which shows the fields in which there was an actual improvement as, did, as um, following the surveyor's inspection after the works were carried out. So these two plans should be um, a complementary and yeah. they should be understood yeah. together. They've got to be read with the schedule. Okay. And does the bill as put forward by the promoters refer to both of these plans? Our bill? Yes. I don't think it does, no. So there's two bills that have to be understood as complementary, but the Bill, there's two plans that are, that are understood as complementary, but the bill only refers to one plan. Am I understanding well, you correctly? Well, but, but in a sense, the, um, this bill um, is, a, is, a, is a fresh start, so it it refers to a plan. Um, it doesn't doesn't. I don't think the the bill which is before you specifies where that bill comes from in the text of the bill. It just simply says these are the land plans. Okay. So, but I don't think it would be unfair to say this, but there seems to be some ambiguity. Are you aware of any other land plans? Today, for, the, for the current bill, no. Yeah, 
are, are, are pertinent to the current bill? I don't think so, no. Other than the bill, other than a, a subsequent plan. Um, other than the plans which we've produced and um, which we've been working on up till now, I'm not aware of any other plans. So, so if I can move just interrupt. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we have Mr. Simon this morning making reference to an 1851 so plan. So, there's an 1851 plan, just to clarify that. So, we now know there's an additional plan which potentially could impact upon. Um, the definition of benefited land and who headed SARS, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. I, uh, suspect, I suspect, though, the 1851 plan will be a fair copy of the 18... The 1848 plan, which, we, which you've seen online, essentially is the 1846 plan and then referenced to the schedules which were produced after the works were carried out. It's the same plan. It's just been... Uh, it's just got a docket on, on it in the, in the top left-hand corner. So it's the same plan. And I suspect that the 1851 plan will be the 18 will be that plan, but excluding the fields which didn't benefit. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Are you aware of potentially any other plans in addition to the 1851 plan? And not unless uh, something else, um, some other rabbit comes out of the hat. No, I'm not. No. Given these rabbits that have been coming out of the hat with alarming regularity. Have you undertaken any work to establish if there are any further plans? Oh, I, think, I, think, I think following this, uh, th this meeting, the, the promoters will be making urgent contact with the National Record Office to obtain a copy of the 1851 plan. Um, Mr Simon seems to be very knowledgeable about these matters mm -hmm. and, and clearly uh, in any methodology going forward, mm -hmm. I think the promoter would, would like to liaise with Mr. Simon in, in that regard. I mean, he, I, I don't know how Mr. Simon became aware of that. I mean, he could have mentioned that in his last um, two or three submissions, but he's he's obviously mentioned it at the last minute today. Had he drawn it to our attention uh, last week? You, 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 you may say, well, why rely on Mr. Simon? We're not necessarily relying on Mr. Simon, but he does seem someone who has, you know, not in, not in considerable local knowledge. But I think, I think th there needs to be a serious... Um, effort on the part of the promoter to make sure that there is nothing out there which could then contradict, shall we say, the 1851 plan once we've looked at it. This seems eminently sensible, but I imagine that would have been the correct course of action before introducing the bill. Why was that work not undertaken? Uh, we, we, we simply weren't aware of it. You know? Is there anything else you're not aware of? How do I know? Uh, as again, it comes down to the known, the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns. So, if you're aware of those things that you might not have been aware of, why was work not undertaken prior to the introduction of this bill to establish? Why was there not contact made with the relevant records office? Why was research com uh, commissioned? With, with, with hindsight, that would have been the correct course of action. So, mm -hmm. And that's why we're here apologising for the, for the error, convenient. No, I appreciate that. My, my concern is that had this not come to light and this bill become an act, um, hindsight's all very well, but it's not very effective if something's... The statute book. Mary, did you want to come in? No, the answer to the question. I, mean, I, think, I think it's also fair to say that these, you know, the adjusting these plans will, you know, obviously make them correct and, and all the rest of it. But I think that the financial implications of these adjustments will be very minor. There will be one or two people who pay a bit more, but I think for the vast bulk of people, the, the practical consequences of it will be pretty are likely to be pretty small. I appreciate that, but for those you know, four new heritors, it is um, significant. Um, well, it'll be three new heritors, because one of them's an existing heritor. OK. But just another point I wish to go and pick up on in this issue of the uh, dollary area. Can you shed some light on why this has been excluded? Well, I've got some... If I could get you to look at these, please. Um, could them... These photographs, are Yeah. One of the one of the when preparing the plans and the which you, which we have prepared to date and the schedule of heritors, obviously we looked at the existing schedule of heritors, which as you know does not include dollary, and that's now been and the reason for that has now been confirmed when you look at the 
book of reference which specifically refers to the exclusion of dollary. And I always understood that was because for, this, for the simple practical reason that the POW improvement works in 1846 could not have been carried out without the active cooperation of Dollery. Dollery is the, is the key point in the whole POW. The, the, between uh, the source of the POW at Methven Moss and, and, and Dollery Bridge, the fall is insignificant. And, it, and, and uh, well, actually, it's down to about the Muckleburn, which is just upstream from Dollery. The fall, the, the, the POW is to all intents and purposes flat, and it runs through very soft, um, soft soils. When you get to just upstream of Dollery Bridge, you get into hard sandstone, and the, the ground levels rise quite significantly. So when, when the uh, power was improved in 1846, they had to dig through the sandstone rock at Dollery in order to let the water fr um, through from all the flat ground upstream. And in 1995, we did further um, uh, improvements to the POW um, at Dollery to improve the drainage upstream. And these are photographs which I took at the time. And if you look through the photographs, you'll see that the, the work carried out was very significant. We took out a huge depth of rock, large amounts of, uh, of pretty unsuitable stuff. And um, in order to uh, dispose of the material, we had to dig um, pits in the, in the fields on, on, on either side to bury the rock and then cover it over with soil. Now, we had no, we, we were only able to do this through the um, goodwill of Mr. Murray, who then owned the um, then owned Dollery and whose forebears owned the owned the, owned Dollery in 1846. So we were totally dependent on his goodwill. He um, he, he received no compensation um, and no no payment for that at all. Um, the bill gives. Um seeks to give permission to the commissioners, as the previous act does, for access to people's property to carry out maintenance. Why is it for uh, the owner of a dollar that's just it's their goodwill, and why is it a, would it be a legal requirement for other heritors? Well, we've we've uh, uh, I, I don't think we had. I think if we, if if we hadn't if we had gone along and said to, said to Mr. Murray, we want to come through your through your estate and dig up large amounts of rock and bury them in the fields, bury it in, uh, bury it in the fields. I think we'd have had. How big is been some difficulty? How big is Mr. Murray's estate? Or how big? It's not very big. It's um, a couple of hundred acres. A couple of hundred. It's acres. a house. It's a house with some nice parkland and a few fields around it. How many acres does the average resident in the Balgarin estate have? Well, I appreciate a much smaller area. So it's a question of power. But it's also, also, when you look at, when you look at the land, when you go there, because it seems to me there's two there's classes. There was two classes of um, the, people when you, look, when, when you look at the land, I know the 1846 plan shows it as being potentially improved. But when you go and look at it, okay, it's, it's, it's grassland which which slopes down on a steep gradient towards the power. I, I appreciate it's, the. There's, the significance and the importance of that land. This is a question about rights. Why has an exception been made? Because I don't honestly think that the in, 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 that the land at Dollery actually benefits from the power at all. I think it's the other way around. I think he he has provided all the other people in the valley with a great so benefit you, you, in allowing his okay. land to be. These uh, as I understand done correctly, the assessment in the plan suggests that the land does benefit Dollery. Well, is that what the land? I agree. That's what the 1846 plan but, so says. So you're saying you that it doesn't benefit. You go and look at it. So what, 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 I'm inter hang on. what I'm keen to understand is that you're saying there's land that is identified as benefited, as benefited, which in your opinion you're saying is not. So you're contradicting um, the plans. Why is that any different from an objector saying that their lands in the Balgown is not benefited? Well, um, if it's just an opinion. Mm. Could, could I to answer that, the, the, um, the 1846 original plans did show that there was ground benefited uh, by the improvements. There was then a note added by the surveyor, which the council picked up on, which says in the plans, I'm not sure the exact place, um, that while they did benefit from it, that benefit could have been achieved without the vast cost that was spent on the POW. That could have been achieved for them very simply 
by draining into an area that, that ran freely itself. Uh, so it was decided at that time and written into the, the legal documentation at the time that while they had benefited, they didn't require the expense of, of maintaining the POW to get that benefit. And that was what our council picked up on when he gave the opinion that it was right that they did not pay uh, an ongoing payment. So in, in, that, just in that specific regard, if you're saying there's ultimately class, you know, into separate classes, people who benefit the land. So a, a key issue that was, uh, has been previously raised is, for example, the distinction between water that drains in from agricultural land, which is silt, soil on it, and water that is um, injected into the power from the Balgarian estate. Now, you've suggested that in previous evidence sessions that everyone benefits. Now you're saying that there's different classifications of benefit and that has to be reflected to the extent where someone in the dollar estate can be exempted entirely. Is this not inconsistent? Could, could, could I maybe just come in here? If you, if you look at, um, I think it's actually the opinion of council at uh, the bottom of uh, page two in paragraph four, And if you can see, maybe just three lines up, it starts with the word in there. In addition, it should be noted that the penultimate page of the report accompanying the book of reference, which is one of the, the legal documents we've, we've circulated this morning, states that the surveyor had not put apportioned any part of the estimated expense of the works to Mr Murray of Dol Dollery because of an agreement between him and the committee of heritors which had promoted the bill. Which and then he quotes from the from the which provided that he was not to be liable for any part of the expenses. So I suppose the, the I mean I, I do understand your argument, um, and it's, it's it's one of fairness. But I think what we're saying is you know we're we're the promoters are, are attempting to follow the 1846 Act and use that as a proxy for identifying benefited land, and to follow that would therefore mean that Dollary would be excluded because Mr. That, McKee, that, this this bill um, in the clauses to repeal the 1846 Act. Yes, I, I appreciate that. Yes. So I'm asking, what is the argument and justification the surveyor, for retaining the surveyor this provision? The 1846 says, I must also state that I have prepared the plans for the works <clears throat> in terms of that agreement, the effect of which is that the amount of the expense of the works has been very considerably increased above what is necessary for the purposes of the drainage or, or expedient uh, for Mr Murray's own interest, he says. What I'm wanting to establish is why the promoters think that a deal that was agreed, which I know as, as of a minute of the meeting of that deal, we can refer, as of a contract that we can refer to. It's in, it's in the reference. Yeah. I'm just read it for you. But the nature of it, the trade, was of a time that was in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. Because why, why, what is the justification for this? Uh, which is contained within the, 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 it's, in the it's in the book of reference. But why, is, why should this be preserved into the new well, act? The, 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 well, the promoter's position is, is that it is using the identification of, should we call it, benefited land, the red line uh -huh. from the 1846 Act, which we accept is going to be repealed. But we're using that red line and using that red line for the purposes of the Power Bill plans. Now, the red line for the purposes of the 1846 Act excludes the lands at Dollary because of the agreement which you've um, referred to and has been discussed. So we're simply following what was done before. You might say, well, wh why do that? Why not do something different now? And I do understand your point, you know. OK, I, I appreciate that. But there's lots of things from the previous act that you're not wishing to continue. That's hence the purpose of bringing this forward. Now, you've not argued that the land in Dollary is not benefited. Indeed, you've argued that there's other land that's benefited in, in residential areas that should be subject to these charges. So why, in principle, would you wish to maintain this provision? Do, is there any reason other than simply just, um, it just seems continuity? Right. <clears throat> it seems the right thing to do. It seems the right thing to do. Mm. So that's the Absolutely. opinion of the promoters. I mean, it was a, I mean, if we're following the 1846 plans... We should be consistent, and this is this is a basis on which they were done. I, I, I think the, the promoter will consider the direction of the questioning and, and maybe revert back in, in, in a written statement if we may. Can, can I just um, j just for, for, for some helpful clarification? Substantial work has been done at Dollary, and indeed the day that we, we came to visit, we, we stopped at Dollary Bridge and we saw um, the, the degree to which work had been carried out. So substantial work has been carried out at Dollary. 
that work being carried out, was that with the permission of Mr Murray? So, and it had access as well. It involves okay. putting a lot of spoil so, into his fields. Had no work been done at Dollery, what would the impact have been on Mr Murray's property? It would have been no difference at all. If, if the work had not been done, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have had to put up with uh, all that disturbance and, and mess. And the power going upstream would be... Uh, we were able to, we've been able to deepen the power going upstream by about two foot. It doesn't sound much, but it actually it's very significant. So we had considerable benefit, everybody upstream, right the way up to Belgar. So if no work at all had been done at Dollery, it would have had absolutely no impact on Mr Mudd? No, I don't think it would have had. It, it, it would have. You don't think, have just, or you? Well, or I you know, know it would. He would have. He he derived no benefit from the work we did in in, in 1995 at He's all. Like None at all. Stream of that bridge. So you're saying? Oh, does he have any up, upstream? I think it's all downstream of that bridge. Which so, no, so you're saying that the land in Dollery is not benefited. So the land plans are wrong then. In stating it as there benefited. is a, there is a section below the bridge which is drawn in differently from the benefited land above, and it is benefited and the note with it says that that benefit could have been achieved without the expense of 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 doing up the POW. The, 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 Mr Simons estimates that expense as over a million pounds in today's money of the 1846 Act and the note says that he could have achieved that without going to the huge expense that was done. A, a, I presume a simple drain would have done it. He, while he did benefit he didn't need to spend all that money to benefit him, was the key reason the original surveyor uses for leaving him out of the assessment. So he benefits in some way, because if he, he could does. have benefited... There, there is a bit of he, he could have, If he could have benefited without spending the money, then he must benefit from the work yeah, that's done. Yeah, it is shown that there is some benefit there, um, but it doesn't require the huge ongoing expense to obtain that benefit. There's a fundamental problem here, is it... In previous evidence, benefited land and non-benefited land has been a binary distinction. Now this it's is not. Yeah. This is uh, ambiguous. Mm -hmm. oh, it, it comes from the original data. We've looked much harder at it now, and that's what it says. Um, and our initial response has been to carry it forward. As Alistair says, um, we're capable of reconsidering. So can, can I accept this? Is it the, the promoter's... Um, permission that there's gradations of benefited land, that some land is more benefited than others within the overall category of benefited land. Is that the position of the promoters? That is the position of the 1846 thing, and yes, so we intended to bring that forward. Yes. So, for any um, one who raises the issue to suggest, for example, that they believe their property is less benefited than another, while still being benefited within benefit, that benefited land, they have a valid point. Well, it isn't more or less benefited. It is benefited at zero cost or benefited at ongoing expense. So it's and that, I would be happy to say that to any of the householders, that they, all of us who are apart from Dollary have to spend money to maintain our benefit. The distinction made for him 150 years ago was that he didn't have to spend money to benefit. OK, well, again, there's reference. I guess we spoke about 170 years ago. Yes, so you spoke about 150 said. years ago. Why should this be continued forward? Does it seem fair and equitable and reasonable? To me, it does. Yeah. Can I just ask, have you had any discussion with Mr Murray about the potential for him to... He doesn't own the house anymore. He sold it about two years ago. Okay, so um, wh whoever now owns the house, have you had any discussion? Not at all, never met him. About the potential, no discussion? None at all. Not occurred to you to, to meet no. with them to discuss the works no, that's done I and the access issues? We, do, we, 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 we never, it's never necessary to do any work down in that section of the power. Unless, the only time we've, we've done, only time, I mean I've been doing the power for 30 years, the only time we've ever done any work down there, there, there was in 1995 when we did that work which was entirely for the benefit of the people upstream. But there is a potential that you could, you could be required to do work there in the future. Very, very unlikely, because it goes through a hard rock channel. And the usual reason for doing, for doing improvements is, uh, is because you, you, get, you get the bank slipping in. It's, it, it's a rock channel there. Yeah. We've, uh, the, the, in, in 30 years, it's the only time we've ever done any work there. And, and at no time did the, con the commissioners, commissioners consider it good practice to, to speak to the new owner to say, 
We went to update. So this this is the the function of of the POW. He's not this a heritor. We have no. He's not a heritor. You see at the moment. Just you know, I've been listening. <coughs> excuse me to everything that's been said this morning, and I have mm. to say, I think we're going round in circles here. We have 1846, and I heard what you said about Dollery and Mr Murray not being able to, well, being able to do the different work which therefore didn't feed into the POW, therefore you're regarding him nowadays as not benefited, is that correct? You know, I think we need to kind of drill down here. He's either benefited or he's not benefited. In and my view, he doesn't benefit, no, it's the other way around. he doesn't benefit, so nowadays he doesn't benefit. No. It's the other way around. We, we have benefited I, hugely I heard from... That, I heard that and I understand that. But I think what Tom Arthur's trying to get at is, in 1846, obviously someone deemed him benefited, so therefore wrote in that he therefore wouldn't have to contribute because of him being gracious and allowing you onto the land. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to establish now is we don't think that's actually acceptable to come forward to us now in 2018 and say he didn't benefit or whether he did benefit in 1846 but because he was so gracious to let us onto the land he therefore doesn't have to pay we need to translate that and be very clear in 2018 does he benefit or does he not benefit and if he does in any shape or form benefit then i think we are really coming from the perspective then in modern days terms he should therefore be included in this calculation. Well, uh, so, do, in, if we ignore 1846, in 2018, does he benefit or does he not? Is it a simple answer? Is it yes? You know. In, in, in my view, looking at it practically, I would say he doesn't. I mean, if you look at the photographs, you'll see there's a 12 foot deep rock I, channel that goes through I his can land. see all that. I can there see no all that. I just want to hear fins. from you. In whether in the pan, pan, if we're using the original plans and the definition is benefit or not, then he's in. He's in. So I, if that's the answer, I think we are basically saying you need to look at that again, quite frankly. Yeah. It, uh, if I can just be correct, Mr Grierson's opinion is that Dollarite is benefited, and Mr Guest's opinion is it is not. Well, I, I said if we use the, a, the map from the, the uh, 1846, which we are attending to do then, or 1848, as the definition, then in that definition he is in. Okay. Maybe you want to Can we move on now to the issue of um, increasing the costs? Because all of the, the new work that will need to be done, um, redrawing of plans, um, will add a substantial cost. Do you have any figure for how much this is going to cost going forward? Uh, I'm going to start on behalf of Savills, who are undergoing the, the remapping exercise. We're doing the, the remapping at, at, at no cost. Um, to the to the commissioners or to the power. So there'll be no additional cost to the heritors. Not from Savills, no. What's the commission's view and the commissioner's view? Will there be any additional cost to the heritors from from the delay in processing this bill through Parliament? You've had there, to take there, further there will legal be some advice. Additional legal fees, yes. Do you have uh, any idea how much that will be? Uh, I wouldn't like to give a, a, a figure here that could be wrong, no. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it will be several thousand pounds, yes. And the council opinion, is that included in that figure? Yes. And, and the original intention, I believe, was to allow a three-year period to collect all the monies. Have, have you given thought to perhaps increasing that, to, to, to recoup the monies? Not at this stage, no. We, we, we still have a, a forward budget that says we can get on track in three years. OK. Obviously, we haven't got to the end of the process yet, but we're still on track. OK, that's fine. Um, is there a particular reason that Savills, Savills are doing this at no cost? So the original mapping exercise was undertaken, and we accept that there was errors in mapping the exact path of the 1846 plan. And so we're going back to rectify those by following the, the correct boundaries okay. this time around. OK. When you did the original piece of work, did, did you try to, to do any research or check to see if that was the correct plan to use? Because we've heard about 1846, mm -hmm. 1848. We've now heard about 1851. There may be other plans. What did you do to, to satisfy yourself that you were using the correct plan? 
Um, I apologise, I wasn't involved in the original mapping exercise okay, of the first, first plan, but um, it was a colleague of mine, who, um, a former colleague who no longer works for Savills, who undertook that exercise. And what was used was the um, 1846, the photocopy of the 1846 plan, and then um, the local knowledge of and expertise of, of Mr Guest. Okay. Um, I mean, and, and the other issue that, that is of a concern to, to the committee, Mr Simon seems to have had very little difficulty in finding additional plans and drawing up different land plans and deciding who should benefit and who shouldn't benefit. Um, and, and it would appear, on the face of it, that he's not a heritor. And, and I, I struggle to understand how Mr Simon has been able to, to do all of this research and find all of these additional plans and none of the, the commissioners or the promoters of the bill have been able to find them. Do you have anything that can reassure us that you're absolutely confident that you've not missed anything else? Or is there any explanation as to why Mr Simon can find us and, and you were un, 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 unable to? Mr Simon is, a, is, 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 is an academic who's made a particular study and interest in this sort of thing. Uh, and he's got plenty of time in which to, to, de to devote to it. And um, as he said himself when, I, when we met him, that he's something of a perfectionist. So, mm. you know. Um, I think they were, they were aware that we had to find these because certainly uh, as a lay person, I didn't understand the act well enough. And the steps we've taken this time is to get someone else to interpret the, the act for us, to get a council to give us proper advice of exactly what the schedules are, how they all fit together, and to bring that to you so that we really are certain this time we're following this correct methodology and have turned up all the information we need to find. Mm. So you didn't take legal advice at the start of this process? We, we, we had lots of legal advice, but um, it, it, this seems to be the ultimate that we can do to make sure it's right. Mm. And can, can I come back to a point that Mr Guest that you made when you said that um, Mr Simon is a, an academic and a bit of a, an expert. I mean, given that, that you have spent 20, 30 years walking the POW and you have a, a deeply um, personal and professional interest in the POW, as, as do you, um, Mr Grierson, would you not consider yourselves to be experts on the POW? Um, I think I'm a reasonable practical expert, but I'm not, a, I'm not an academic and I'm not somebody um, who uh, looks at, you know, archive material in um, uh, na national um, archives on a regular basis. No, I, mm. I don't do that. I mean, really. Given that you, you were undertaking quite a substantial exercise to update the 1846 legislation, I would have considered that you would have made sure that you had every I dotted and every T crossed before you got to a point that you produced a piece of, of, of legislation or propose a piece of legislation. And to me, that, that would mean doing all your research, ensuring that you were using the right plan, ensuring there was nothing else there. And, and I, I struggle to understand why you didn't do that. Well, I suppose, um, uh, you know, when we started this exercise, which was over three years ago, we were looking to produce a, a workable, practical plan um, rather than something which was... Um, you know, legally perfect. I suppose that was probably the misunderstanding. But, but it has to be legally perfect to go through Parliament. Well, yes, but in the sense of the... Well, Parliament can, dis, can, can, can adopt any plan and it's then legally perfect. It's the, you know, it's the basis on which the plan the is produced, isn't use. it? Yeah, the evidence base you use. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry. No, carry on. We acknowledge that the, the original plans were, were based on the 1846 plan, which was a photocopy, but there was um, too much subjectivity put into them and um, local knowledge adapted to them. And we, following Mr Simon's um, revelations, we've, we've acknowledged that this is an area that we've been um, weak in and poor in, and we intend to, to liaise with Mr Simon and speak with him to, to find out his sources, work with him to, to ascertain that the 1851 plan now is the final plan that should be followed and we're going to to map that to the boundaries of the the red line boundary as far as we can tell from the 1851 plan and any areas of subjectivity will be 
um, use an element of local knowledge, expertise. We will um, look at Mr Simon's um, opinions on it and that will be um, reported in any area of subjectivity will be documented and highlighted um, to yourselves. Um, and I think we acknowledge that that's, we think that's the best way forward and um, to rectify what has been a mistake on, on our part. What work will you undertake to ensure that the evidence that Mr Simon has now brought to light is accurate and correct? Well, first of all, we need to have sight of the 1851 plan, have a look at, uh, make sure it's um, authentic and in a workable condition, and then we will do our own independent research along with um, Mr Simon's um, input to ascertain that there's, there's no further plans. And the 18, 1846 Act refers to um, the 1846 plan, the 1848 plan and the 1851 plan. Um, and there are no other plans referred to in that Act. I'm just looking for confirmation of as far as... That to be the case, yeah. but that, that's, that's something we, we need to absolutely... Uh, absolutely. No, I mean, that. when you say that you're looking for Mr Simon's input, to, to ensure that the 1851 plan is, mm -hmm. is, is the, the last or latest plan. I'm, I'm keen to understand what work your own firm will be doing to establish that that is the, the, the latest plan. Well, I mean, surely you're not going to rely on Mr Simon, because Mr Simon could say there was a plan in 1871 or 1881. No, no, but we will do our own research and contact um, the National Archives and, and do the appropriate due diligence before we confirm the final version of this plan. Mm -hmm. and, and committee would like to see the evidence of, of, of how you establish of course, yeah. um, the, the latest version of the plan to, to, to base any, any further work um, th that you do. Um, did you want to come in on that? How, lo how long do you think all of this is going to take? Well, considering just this morning we um, have been told about the 1851 plan, mm -hmm. we need to factor in some time to, to um, have sight of that. Um, and then following that, the mapping exercise, we considers to take um, no longer than four weeks. OK, OK. Um, and, and just finally, I mean, I'd, I'd be interested in Mr um, Grierson's, Mr Guest, and indeed Mr McKee's view on this. I mean, do you accept that this latest, um, and I suppose episode is probably the only word I can really use, this latest episode and all this evidence that has come to light has damaged the credibility of the commissioners amongst the heritors? It must have done, yes. And what, what steps will you take to, to repair that damage? Well, the first thing is to get, get it right, get the map right. Um, and that's the most important thing, to get that in the end. Um, then after that, it's, I suppose, contact with people, isn't it? It's mm. a people process. So do you, in, do you intend setting up meetings with all the heritors? How will you communicate um, the, the change in the plan, how will you explain to them if there are any um, discrepancies in who benefits and who doesn't? Um, well, we, we don't have a plan for that in the, at the present moment. Um, obviously, we know where we have to communicate with people who are going to be affected. Um, there has to be a, 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 another process started. Um, Surely you need to communicate with all of the heritors. I would say there's definitely something has to happen, yes. Uh, as I say, we haven't got that far made it, that decision. OK, Mr um, Guest. Take advice on that if, if this process required. OK, Mr Guest, do you have any additional comments? No? Not really, no. Yeah. No, Mr McKee, no? no. OK, thank you. I, I think it would be very helpful for the committee to see, uh, firstly, a, a document setting out the plans of who intend to engage okay. with the heritors. I think it would be exceptionally helpful as well to see uh, if some documented evidence of the, of the, something to document the approach that the Commission intends to and, uh, take to ensure that there are no other relevant documents which have uh, been overlooked in this process. Um, I think there has to be a, th a great deal amount of work and it has to be thorough because what we cannot risk is getting to the end of a process where another set of maps are composed mm -hmm. to discover that there is additional maps that have not uh, have been come to light and I would be very uh, I think it's essential that the promoters can bring forward evidence of how we're going to ensure that will be the case um, there is a, another point I want to this has been before but 
I accept this is the path that promoters wish to go down. However, it, it does seem incredibly complicated and fraught with risk. Have uh, promoters given any thought to a new 2018 assessment, which, using modern techniques, modern standards, that everyone can have confidence in, rather than relying upon documentation, which is 170, 160 years old, and potentially other documents that come to light? I have actually discussed this possibility with the chairman of the um, uh, Drainage Association, and he tells me that this is something which uh, is a service that they provide from time to time in defining the benefited areas for arterial water courses um, and internal drainage boards um, in England and Wales. So that is another possibility. Previously, I think it's been suggested that cost would be inhibitive. Is that still the view? From my, I'm actually going to be seeing um, uh, Mr. Thompson tomorrow, tomorrow, and I could discuss that with him. I think I believe, that I believe the cost would actually be might not be that that prohibitive. Mm. Okay. So, in terms of this assessment, uh, this would be viewed to provide essentially a complete up-to-date picture of what land is benefited and what land is not benefited. And that would be something that could be produced using modern techniques, digitised, easily accessible, and most importantly, something all heritors can have confidence in. Is that what the aspiration would be to achieve? I'm still under the opinion that would be very, very hard to achieve. I don't think it... We'd have no basis to instruct someone as to how to define the edge of benefited land he anyone we appoint to do that needs a basis to work from and the only basis we can give him is the evidence from from the past I'm sure seeing mr thompson who's the chairman of the association of drainage authorities tomorrow um he's, he's up, happens to be up here and I've, i haven't met him before and i was going to see him um and i could discuss with him um whether, I mean, when I've spoken to him on the phone, he's told me that that is a service that the association do provide to members. And Would you be willing to write to the committee to share the outcomes of that meeting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. OK. Alison. Yes, OK. Well, <clears throat> as you obviously know, that we now have a third of all heritors of the Balgown residents have expressed unhappiness with the bill. So I just want to know the promoter's response you know, to their submissions and particularly the issues raised relating to the residential heritors only being charged at the higher rate based on the footprint of their house and their gardens being charged at the same rate as fields. And also, since significant costs have so far been... In oh. Fields would be... The current proposal is that the, that the way in which houses, residential properties would be assessed is on... Is, 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 is that the notional area of their plot would be five times the footprint of the house, OK? And there'd be nothing on any surplus. So any surplus okay. would be treated as a community land, which, in effect, has a nil value. Right, OK. OK. And, and, well, significant costs have so far been incurred in developing, you know, a bill that protects and respects the Commissioner's position. Is it reasonable for the Commission to object on grounds of cost to doing a proper reassessment of the benefited land, which we're obviously been discussing, and that the aim should be to achieve a bill that is actually fair and acceptable to the residential heritors as well as the farmers? I mean, well, we I think that's something that. we've always striven for. Yeah, we, we, we definitely are in favour of finding a system of apportioning our costs that is fair, transparent and agreed by all. And, and so far, we've given it our best attempt. Um, so, yeah. The point was, um, that's that. And uh, do you think that you're concerned that so many heritors, you know, now with them being a third of the total number, you know, so it is a large proportion of residential heritors, have now expressed such levels of concern and unhappiness with the bill? Are you, are you concerned about that? It's obviously a setback. Um, the main point in that letter seemed to be about double charging, which, in speaking to people at the development seems to be what they're talking to me about. Um, their belief that if Scottish Water were to charge them, um, well, to take over the sewage works, they would then get charged on their council tax as well as the 
pay the commission's costs, and they consider that double charging. Um, we don't consider that double charging in that we don't see any overlap in our services. Um, Scottish Water would be processing dirty water, treating it and releasing it into the POW, and it's our job then to take it uphill out of the catchment. Um, unfortunately, we think that Scottish Water's charges are charges that are applicable all over the country, and the POW, um, for people living in the POW benefited area, that is an additional charge that we think it's fair and reasonable for them to pay. consider. Um, I mean, the, 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 the people on the Balga, on the Manor, Manor Kingdom development, their properties are connected to the wastewater treatment works. And at the moment, that, that is being run uh, by, the, by the developer or the developer's successors uh, at no charge. If you compare that, if you compare their situation with all the other people who have residential properties in the, on benefited land who have septic tanks, they have to pay, that they, they pay the power assessment, and they also pay the costs of maintaining and emptying their septic tanks. Now, to get a septic tank emptied costs about £250. If the septic tank needs to be replaced, a typical uh, septic tank for a domestic property would cost you between three and £4,000 to replace. Those costs have to be met entirely by the house owner. So they're paying the cost of their sewage treatment, so to speak, and, the, and, to, the, and to the power commission for their outfall, and if the if the Balga, if the Manor Kingdom um, residents end up having to pay power assessment for the outfall and the council tax supplement for the maintenance of the sewage works, it seems to me that they're in exactly the same position. Okay. And it would you know it would be inconsistent if they if they were if they didn't pay the power assessment when you compare them with the people who have septic tanks. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Now, could I move on to the rights of appeal? I'd just like to ask a couple of questions there. You know, whilst noting that the two proposed rights of appeal, one for 10 or more heritors and the other for individual heritors in circumstances where the budget is 60,000 or greater, is that the, the latter is stated as being index linked. I would just like to ask, what index are you actually referring to here? What index would you use? It would either be CPI or RPI, wouldn't it? <clears throat> Well, is, is that what it, is it? Well, I can't remember which it is. What is it, David? It was just a general proposal. There was no, there was no final decision on which index to use. Just, just a recognition that it would need to be index linked, but there wasn't any final decision of which index it would be. Yeah, I think so I cannot comment on that. Can you write to the committee and let us know whether it's RPI or CPI, please? Thank you. Okay, and the proposed amendment to the bill states that is, if there is an appeal, the extent will decide what the budget should be. No, the expert, sorry, will decide what the budget should be. How will they actually do that rather than only being able to assess if the proposed work is necessary and the cost reasonable? Well, we had in mind that the expert, one of the reasons I'm seeing Mr Thompson tomorrow is that <clears throat> uh, ADA frequently provide experts um, to adjudicate in exactly these situations. Right, okay, so you're, you're looking to yeah. find the expert. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Um, you know, do the commissioners know how they know they are paying a reasonable I mean, How do the commissioners know that they're going to be paying a reasonable amount for cleaning and a repair contract if you're not actually testing it in the market by going out to get quotes? Now, I do know we've discussed this in the past, and I do appreciate what you're saying about the person who's been doing it historically has the economies of scale, etc., and is that you know good at doing the job. But you know, the the, the, the surveyor is. I mean, we instruct um, uh, contractors to do other works on in other situations, so we're aware of what the typical hourly rates are for a man on an excavator. And we're aware of what the typical rates are for cleaning ditches and so forth. <coughs> so, you know, we, we, we can see very quickly whether they're Yes, you can comparable. see, but I think in light of the fact that you now have a third of the heritors unhappy with what the process is, etc., do you see where I'm coming from, whereas I, I it do. might actually be helpful to actually have... I know, do, but... Out, I, not I, necessarily put it out to tender, but actually to achieve quotes so that then you're actually in a position where you can turn around to anyone who's complaining and saying... 
We're paying well, students like for eggs. But here's I don't like getting post. quotes from people if I know that they're not going to get the work. It doesn't well, seem fair. Well, I think somebody, that's the system of them. nowadays. They might actually come in know, cheaper you, than the chap doing the job, Mr Guest, and therefore potentially win the quote. Well, um, the, the, working, the, the, the maintenance of the power depends to a large extent on cooperation with and, and and the goodwill of all the farmers and owners who's, through whose land it passes. And having somebody who knows them all and understands how they work and can organise the work to fit in with the operation of their farms is yeah. extremely helpful. Yes. And if we I parachute in somebody who just happens to be a cheap chap with a digger who doesn't know anybody and doesn't understand how the farms that's work, not my point. it would be... My point is not difficult. parachuting anyone in who might be undercutting somebody. My point to you is you're now in a position where you're no longer dealing with the farmers, etc., along the line. You're now dealing with 31 heritors who are extremely unhappy with the process. These people might not have the farming background or the knowledge of how things work, and I appreciate what you've described to me is in farming how things probably do work. I feel it would be appropriate for you to actually seek quotes so that you are keeping yourself right in the eyes of these people so you can actually turn around and say, we're paying him this because it would cost that elsewhere. That's mm. my point yeah, that I'm well, putting I would, to I would, you. Yeah, yeah. I don't know whether that's a matter for the bill or whether it's just good practice from the point of view of... Well, I certainly um, think surveys. it's good practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. thank you. I think I'll pass back to Tom now. Yeah, that's fine, sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the Manor Kingdom um, residents pay in, in total about a third of the budget that is collected al along the POW. Um, and, and there has a, a proposal for one commissioner to come to, to represent the, the residents from Manor Kingdom. Two at the moment. Or two. Yeah. There, there has been a suggestion that given that they pay a third, they should have three commissioners. I'd be interested in your view on that. Is that something you would consider? Allowing Manor Kingdom three commissioners? We thought two was sufficient. We did start at one and it was drawn to our attention. Um, each section would then have two commissioners each. It seems about the right place to be. Um, they, they pay um, a third of the amount. Um, it, two seemed about right. Is it something you would consider? Three? Well, it would need other changes. Uh, we would need to look at the quorum again. When we moved from one to two, we looked at the quorum numbers. If we're going to look at changing again, we'll have to see what, what that does to the group. When you say we, are you talking about the original commissioners that are there? I presume so, yes. Yes, the commissioners, it's a decision for the commissioners, I suppose, because to put forward a, an, another amendment. Okay. Is it? Okay. I think also, certainly on past experience, I think you'd... OK, there'll be an initial rush of enthusiasm, hopefully, when, the, when, when this is enacted. But I, in the years ahead, I think you might struggle to find three commissioners. But you don't know that, and, and well. you don't know what will happen in the future. I mean, I, I accept that you can say in the past this has been the situation, but you don't know what will happen in the future. No, no. Um, and, and clearly there is an interest from the, the residents yeah. of the, the, the Balgown estate to become more involved. And surely from, a, from the point of view of um, increasing the openness and transparency of how this, um, this all operates, it would be good to have more people involved. I mean, th there is, I believe, a Balgown community group. Have you, have you spoken to them? I have been to some of the, uh, one of their meetings. Yes, I've spoken to them. They had a residents' association. Mm -hmm. um, it relied, I believe, on funding, which isn't there any longer. I, I think in their correspondence they mentioned if they got a, a together another association, would we be interested in communicating with it? Yes, we would. Mm. So in the past, have they been fairly active? They were briefly very active uh, for a year or so, and I think it's not so active now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, just as a general question about engagement, has any progress been made regarding the website and other means of communication? No, that's not something we are looking to tackle until after the bill is enacted okay. and we have some some money. No, I appreciate that. Um, I think just I think, I think also it's not a data protection issue because when we we discussed possibly that, that there would be. A requirement in the bill for us to publish information on the website 
which would enable us to be totally yes, transparent. Yes, I, was, I wasn't suggesting a website in the form it would be, um, I, where this bill to be um, enacted. It was simply as if in terms of a means of keeping um, editors and people affected up to date. I think that would be a very good thing, and it would um, simplify the administration. Yeah. I, th I think what we've discussed before, it was just in terms of the kind of ongoing communication through the bill process. Yeah. That was just purely... I think we, we, we touched on the issue of... Um, Wastewater treatment and uh, the double charging. Just wanted to, to you may have touched on this already, but just to confirm for the record, um, your understanding of who owns the wastewater works. I think it still belongs to the successors to Manor Kingdom. Who's that, Shirley? Avant Tools. Mm. I think all the amenity land within the Manor Kingdom development, including that treatment and treatment right, belongs to Ad Avant Homes have taken over from. Manor From Manor Kingdom, yeah. yes. Okay. Well, well uh, it's Manor Kingdom who's changed the name to Avant Homes. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, that concludes questioning from the committee. <laughs> Would the promoters like to make a, a concluding statement or any final remarks? Okay, well, I would like to thank the promoters and their associates for attending. Uh, clearly, there's a a lot to consider um, going forward and a lot to reflect on. Uh, for the committee, we'll obviously be waiting at an outcome of um, the mapping exercise, um, correspondence regarding um, Mr Guest's meeting with the Drainage Association regarding a potential future assessment, um, and also correspondence regarding uh, other matters, including, uh, for example, which indexation um, the Commission would be seeking to use. And clearly, um, the correspondence on uh, mapping and potential future assessments will help inform our understanding of the Commission's, Commissioner's position in regards to the Dollary um, area. Um, however, um, I'm now, it remains for me to say just to thank the promoters for coming along today and um, I suspend this meeting briefly to allow our witnesses to leave. Okay. The second item on our agenda today is to consider the three objections to the bill. Given the evidence we have heard this morning regarding the land plans, I propose that we defer further consideration of the objections until the situation with the land plans has been clarified. Are we agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Given the circumstances we now find ourselves in, the date of the next meeting of the committee is not yet known and will be notified to the committee's website once confirmed. With that, I close this meeting. <laughs>